dear friends. Today is Remembrance Sunday, and we are living in a time when issues of war and peace are increasingly of immediate concern. The overall world situation is becoming more fraught each day. What shall we do about all the interlocking issues that are causing destruction in the world? It seems to me that certainty in these issues has become something of a cheap commodity, something freely available and often unearned. The Christian tradition has some very clear guidance about whether a war is ever justified, and also about how war should be conducted. Yet to follow those guidelines is extremely challenging, especially to those who want swift and expedient answers, and perhaps most especially for those who are claiming to act in the name of Christian civilization. As Christians, we should pause before judging, and be very careful about how we discern the truth, for at the centre of our faith is the knowledge that ultimately we are all in the wrong, and so we are all called to put our trust in God's judgment, in his concern, and in his power and authority. For a long time I have believed it to be nearly impossible to reach any final certainty about the wrongness or rightness of a particular war. War in and of itself is clearly an evil, but the real question is whether it's a worse evil than the alternative, and there are rarely clear answers on that score, except perhaps in retrospect, as with World War II. All that being said, I do tend to see the current conflict in the Ukraine as the most morally unambiguous conflict of my adult lifetime. What's searched for is the sort of clear understanding of all the issues that is only available to God. We see through a glass darkly, and in these situations we must simply do the best we can, placing the ultimate judgment in the Lord's hands. This can be very challenging, especially when we feel there is a great deal at stake for us personally. As the heart of Remembrance Sunday is a sense of mourning, sometimes a very direct and immediate mourning for someone who has been lost in war, but also a general sense of mourning, where even those who have not directly lost a loved one share in the sense of loss. We are a community that mourns. Yet there is something else going on in our remembrance, and that is the preservation of a memory and an example, a picking up of the baton from those generations who have gone before, so that we today might reaffirm our inheritance from them, and renew our commitment to the values which they shared. A commitment to safeguarding our nation and our way of life, which is, however obscurely it may seem at times, rooted in Christian values. Now today those Christian values are regularly mocked. I see this as a sickness of the soul, manifested through a progressive tearing down and scorning of our heritage and values, those which have made our country what it is, good and bad, for those for which so many people have died. Which brings me to what we're doing today, and why it's so important. For we would not be able to stand here today, taking part in this service, without the sacrifice of those who have gone before us, those who laid down their lives for their friends. What we're doing today is standing against that sickness of the soul, not from any sense of glory in conflict, but because we value what they have achieved, and we recognise the reality and the seriousness of what they have achieved. Those Christian values have some clear teaching for today, in terms of the just war tradition and more broadly. It is central to the Christian faith that the self, our own concerns, are in the end an illusion, a distraction. For what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world, but loses his own soul? This root of selfishness, this preoccupation with our own concerns, is ultimately a burden, a problem, and we are called to give up that burden and focus on Christ alone. To come to him whose yoke is easy and whose burden is light. And this is ultimately our own deepest need and satisfaction, to give up our pettiness and lose ourselves in a larger cause. There are dangers here, dangers that the 20th century showed all too clearly, for there are those who would exploit this desire to lose ourselves in something larger. Ultimately, we must give ourselves up to God and to no one and nothing else. But the way in which that works out in practice is by giving our lives in service to others. As Christ himself puts it, he is in the naked whom we clothe, the hungry whom we feed, the sick whom we heal, the refugee whom we shelter. And it is in doing these things that we find our true peace, the peace which the world cannot give. 
These may seem, in the context of world conflicts and mass migrations, very small things. Yet as I said at the beginning, I think we should leave all the big questions to God. We have simple choices in small circumstances. Today we honour those who had difficult choices in terrifying circumstances, and who still gave their lives for others. And we honour them and give meaning to their sacrifice by maintaining their aims and values, taking their lives as examples for our own, going out into the world committed to serving our neighbour, thus ensuring that what they fought for shall not pass away from our memory. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we shall remember them. Amen.